Hello and good day and we are now down to the second to the last topic for our subject anatomy and physiology and today we will be learning about your reproductive system okay so your reproductive system is actually very vital okay the survival of the human race will always depend on this system okay that we are going to talk about and this is your reproductive system okay and we should start now we're going to talk again with regards to the functions of your uh, reproductive system the first one is the production of your gametes okay the reproductive system uh, produces gametes sperm cells in the testes of males while oocytes or the egg cells in the ovaries of females okay next one is your fertilization uh, the reproductive system enhances the fertilization of the oocyte by the sperm. Duck system in male nourishes the sperm until they are mature and will be deposited into female reproductive system during the sexual intercourse. Now, after which, the female uh, reproductive system receives the sperm and it will be transported into the fertilization site okay and that's how the fertilization will start the third one is all about the development and nourishment of the new individuals now in the female reproductive system uh, it will nurture the development of the offspring produced during the uh, during the intercourse it will be uh, nourished in your uterus until the birth um, of the baby until after the delivery of the baby by the use of your mammary gland for um, breastfeeding okay and the fourth one is all about the production of your sex hormones these are responsible for the gender specific uh, body form normal function of your reproductive system and for the uh, reproductive behavior Okay, I hope this one is uh, clear so that we can move on here to the next slide, which is the formation of sex cells. Again, if we say gametes, these are the sex cells, the sperm in the males, and oocytes are the egg cells in the females. While your meiosis, this is the special type of cell division that leads to the formation of sex cells. Okay, again, we're going to use your uh, meiosis on this part now each sperm cell and each oocyte contains 23 chromosomes please remember this one okay while here in your meiosis uh, the chromosome and uh, the chromosome number is actually halved in preparation for the sexual uh, reproduction okay as you can see here in our illustration so this is your first meiotic division. We also have your second meiotic uh, division. Okay, now let's go here. Look closely. In the early prophase one, the duplicated uh, chromosomes become visible chromatids. Look closely here, this one. It will now become a visible chromatids. Now, on the second phase, which is your middle prophase one, uh, the pairs of the chromosome, as you can see here, um, crossing over may occur at this stage okay look at this one it's like they're like overlapping or crossing uh, from one another in metaphase one the pairs of the chromosomes align along the center of the cell and random assortment of chromosome occurs as you can see here they are already aligned okay in anaphase one so you can see here the chromosomes move apart to the opposite side of the cell okay and the telophase one as you can see there's already a cleavage or the cleavage furrow here the new nucleic form and the cell divides and each cell now has two sets of half the chromosomes as you can see here on both sides Okay, so this is the prophase 2, top next to the column is here, your second meiotic um, division. The prophase 2 is each chromosome consists of two chromatids now. So you can see here, well, the metaphase, the chromosomes align along the center of the cell. And in the anaphase 2, 
chromatid separate and each is now called a chromosome. And the last stage is the telophase 2. New nuclei form around uh, the chromosomes and the cell divides to form your four daughter cells with half as many chromosomes as the parent cells. Okay. Now let's go here. Uh, this one is all about your fertilization. As you can see here, fertilization is the union of the sperm, this one, and the oocyte or the uh or the female um eggs okay now here a zygote is what develops after your fertilization if this uh these two gametes met they will develop a zygote okay develops into an embryo three to 14 days after the fertilization okay so you can see here this is already an embryo 14 to 56 days after the fertilization and after 56 days it will now become fetus okay please memorize the numbers so that you will not get confused okay your zygote is 3 to 14 days your embryo is 14 to 56 days while your fetus is 56 days until the expulsion of the baby okay now let's move here functions of the male reproductive system is to produce sperm cells or the sex cells to produce the male hormones and to transfer the sperm cells to the female so that we can have an offspring okay now moving on here we're going to learn now the male reproductive organs okay so we should always be open-minded especially that we are in medical field that these things that you can see are quite normal there are more extreme cases where you can see the actual penis or the actual vagina especially if you're already in the clinical setup okay so with these things we should always be uh, we should always be open okay now we're going to talk first about this scrotum as you can see here this one is scrotum and then here um it's the same okay so this scrotum they contain your testes uh they contain a dartus a muscle remember the term dartus muscle that moves the scrotum and the testes close and away from the body depending on the temperature okay in cold weather or cold temperature the dartus muscle and the cremaster will contract while on the warm weather they are on relaxed mode okay now the sperm must develop a temperature less than the body temperature okay now let's move on here to the next one so this is your scrotum as you can see here so if it's cold weather it will go up if it's warm it will just dangle there okay so it's like a thermoregulator. It can say if the weather is cold, it's because it is up on the skin. And if it's warm, they're just dangling. Okay. Now let's move on here to the next one. So we have here the testes. As you can see here, this part here. These are the primary male reproductive organ, which produces the sperm. And they are in your scrotum. Okay. Now they contain your um seminiferous tubule this one so you can see they are coiled okay this your this is your seminiferous uh, tubule uh, this is where the sperm is produced okay in which part again it is in your seminiferous tubule now we also have your interstitial cell here your interstitial cell also known as your Leydig cells they secrete your testosterone okay which secretes your testosterone it is your Leydig cells or your interstitial cells we also have here your uh, germ cell the germ cell is actually um it is uh, where the sperm cell begins okay what's that again it is your germ cell we also have here your substantacular cell your substantacular cells, they nourish the germ cells and also produce hormones. Okay. So let's move back here to this illustration. 
there you go. We have your epididymis or epididymis, but I think this one is epididymis. Okay, so as you can see here in this illustration, which is here on this part of the uh, male reproductive organ or here on top of your testis, okay? So this one are the thread-like tubules on the side of each uh, testis and where seminiferous tubules empty the new sperm. This is where sperm continue to mature, develop, and ability to swim and bind to your oocytes. Okay? How about this one? Okay, this is your um, ductus deferens. Okay, your ductus deferens, also known as your vas deferens. They extend from your epididymis and joins seminal vesicle. These structures form your spermatic uh, cord and they are the one who are being cut during the vasectomy. Okay, what is being cut during your vasectomy? It is your vas deferens. Okay. Now, how about here? How about the urethra? So this one, your urethra, this will uh, extend from the urinary bladder in which we uh, we, we learned from the last time here. So this one, the urinary bladder here, it is extends to your, um, it will go to your urethra at the end of your penis, okay? So again, your urethra is uh, from the urinary, urinary bladder to the end of the penis. It is the passageway of both the urine and also um, the uh, the semen, okay, or the or the fluids that are being um, that are being, you know, um, being um, how do you call this one uh, ejaculated or being uh, produced by the male, okay. But uh, the urine and the fluids they don't go at the same time, okay. Remember that they don't go at the same time. Okay, so that is all about your urethra. Now, let's move on further here. So urethra, we'll have here your three parts. So the first one here is your prostatic urethra. It, near, it, near, it is near your uh, prostate. We also have here, this one is the membranous urethra. And then this one, this is your penile uh, urethra or your spongy urethra. Okay. And moving on here, the penis. Okay, the penis is where it transfers uh, a sperm from male to female. Okay, it also excretes your urine. Okay, and during this time, we have the term what we call your erection. And I know the males are very familiar with this one. Erection is like the engorgement of your erectile tissue due to blood. Okay. Now, if there is engorgement due to uh, due to uh, elevation of blood, uh, making the penis enlarge and also firm, okay, and it is very suitable now to have your sexual um, activity, okay. Now, moving on here, we have your in the penis, we have your corpus cavinosum and your corpus spongiosum. Now, these two columns uh, represents or do your um, erectile tissue, okay, which fill with blood for erection. Your corpus cavernosum, uh, cavernosum, and your spongiosum. Okay, moving on here, we also have your a uh, glans penis. So the glans penis, uh, they are well supplied of sensory receptors, and they are very sensitive. Okay, if you're going to touch that one, oh, don't touch that one. I mean, like, if it's like during the sexual intercourse, it is very sensitive. Okay, as you can see here, so uh, this is the glans penis. And uh, the one that is covering your glans penis is actually the foreskin. Okay, the foreskin or the prefuse. Okay, these are loose fold of skin that covers the glans penis. And this is the one that is being removed uh, during the circumcision. Okay. Now, let's move on further. We have here your, uh, your seminal vesicle. 
So you can see here on the top portion, this one, this is your seminal vesicle. This is next to the ductus deferens or your vas deferens, the one we talked a while ago. Uh, they help uh, from the ejaculatory duct. Okay. Now your seminal vesicle, uh, they provide actually the fructus. Okay. Uh, they provide uh, fructus for the uh, the secretion of the semen. Okay. So uh, and also they contain the prostaglandins, which decrease the mucus thickness around the cervix and the uterine tube, and help sperm move through the female reproductive tract. Okay, which contains again what your prostaglandin and they provide fructus for the semen, making it a little bit sweeter if you're going to, you know, to taste it or maybe I don't know. Now let's go here. Contains coagulants that help deliver semen into your uh, female reproductive organ. Okay, so next to your seminal vesicle, as you can see here, we have your prostate gland. This part here, your prostate gland uh, surrounds the urethra, and it is like a size of a walnut. Okay, I know you you know what's walnut. Okay, it contains enzymes to liquefy the semen after it is inside the female, and also. It neutralizes the acidity of the vagina. You know, the vagina is actually very, very acidic. Okay. Next to that, we also have here another gland, which is your bulbourethral gland. Now, your bulbourethral uh, gland is a small mucus secreting gland near the base of your prostate gland, which is this one. Okay. Now. Uh, this one, it neutralizes the acidity of the male urethra as well as the female vagina, okay? That is your bulbourethral gland, okay? Now, moving on here, I know maybe some of you uh, already seen this one. Oh, most of the boys already, knows, uh, already know this one. This is the semen. It is a mixture of sperm and secretions from the glands that we've talked a while ago. It provides a transport medium and nutrients that protect the activate and activate the sperm. Again, we talked a while ago in the seminal fluid that 60% of which a fluid is from your seminal vesicle, uh, vesicles. 30% of fluid is from your prostate gland. 5% of fluid is from your bulbourethral gland and 5% of fluid is from your testis. Okay, so this is your semen. Now, your testicular secretions include sperm and small amount of fluid. Okay, and 2 to 5 ml of semen is ejaculated each time. So each time there's an ejaculation, it is 2 to 5 ml. 1 ml of semen contains 100 million sperm. 1 ml contains 100 million sperm. And only one lucky sperm will going to penetrate your, you know, and it will survive as your offspring. Now, a sperm can live for 72 hours once it is inside the female. Again, how many hours? 72. Moving on here. The path of your sperm. Sperm develop in your seminiferous tubules, the testis. Your epididymis, it is where it will be matured. Your ductus deferens, and then receive secretion from your seminal vesicle, your prostate gland, your bulbourethral gland, and the urethra, where the semen or the sperm exits the body. Okay? I hope that one is clear. And let's move on here. This is your... Uh, spermatogenesis okay so this one is the formation of sperm uh the formation of sperm cells uh, that begins uh during the puberty once once you re uh, you reach your puberty now we have here your uh interstitial uh your interstitial cells uh in semen or tubules which increase in number and size your seminiferous tubules also enlarge and your seminiferous uh, uh, tubules, they produce your 
germ cell and your substantacular cell, the one that we mentioned also a while ago. So what is happening here in the production of your sperm cell is that the first one is your germ cells. Uh, and then we have the process that what we call your spermatogo uh, spermatogonia and then your par uh, primary spermatogenesis to be followed by the secondary spermato uh, spermatocytes, I'm sorry, and then your spermatids and then your sperm cells. Okay, again, um, the very first, uh, the beginning of this one is your germ cell and it is being produced in your seminiferous tubules. Okay. Now looking closely here on your um, sperm cell structure, as you can see here, we have the head, the med, uh, the mid piece, and then the tail. Now the head here, it contains your nucleus, okay? And also DNA. Well, the body here, uh, it contains your mitochondria. And the tail here, as you can see here on the far end, this part here, it is you, it has your flagellum. And the flagellum is the one who is responsible for the movement of the sperm cell, okay? The head contains your DNA and the nucleus, the body contains your mitochondria, the tail has its flagellum, okay? Now, this one, I want you to, uh, to be aware on this one. So we have the hormone, your uh, gonadotropin-releasing hormone. Um, this is uh, being produced or the source is your hypothalamus and the function of this one is stimulates the secretion of your LH and your FSH, okay? Or your luteinizing hormone and your follicle stimulating hormone. Your LH, your luteinizing, it is being produced in the anterior pituitary gland and stimulates secretion of your testosterone. While your FSH or your follicle stimulating hormone, it is also in your anterior pituitary gland, it prompts spermatogenesis. While your testosterone, they are produced in your interstitial cell in the, in the testes and involved in development and maintenance of, product of reproductive organs. Okay, I think this one is also available in your book. Please read that one carefully as well as this one the regulation of reproductive hormone secretion in male. Okay, please read this one also in your book. Well, this, this is what we call your circumcision. I know most of the boys here is already circumcised. So circumcision is the surgical removal of the prepuce or the foreskin, usually um, after birth, um, before the start of the puberty in your grade school or even if you're already in adult uh, adult age you can still do circumcision okay they're saying that you have the lesser chance to get cancer and it is more um, it is more clean if you are circumcised compared of not being circumcised okay so please uh, do circumcision if you're not yet uh, circumcised, okay? Male puberty, uh, what is it? It is the sequence of events in which a boy begins to produce male hormones and sperm cells. Usually begin during your teenage days or teenage um, age from 12 to 14 and it usually ends around 18 or 19 years old, okay? in which testosterone is the major male hormone. So there are a lot of changes that will actually happen during this, uh, during this stage of, the, of a male. Okay, example is the skin texture. There's all, there will also be the fat distribution, start of the hair growth, uh, skeletal muscle growth as well, and the larynx changes. Okay, as we uh, move closer here, we have um, more changes that will be happening with a male individual during this uh, during this period we will be having um, your ejaculation ejaculation is the forceful expulsion of the secretion that have accumulated in the urethra and going out or, or to have an exit from our body that is ejaculation it is forceful expulsion while your emission 
emission is movement of sperm cells, mucus, prostatic secretion, and seminal of vesicle secretions into your prostatic membranous and spongy urethra. Okay, that is like a free will movement, unlike your ejaculation that it that it is force pull um, expulsion. You will also be um, having uh, facial hair. I think I have my facial hair when I'm already uh, 15. I started having my mustache. Then when I was in college by 16, I started having my sideburns as well as my um, as well as my beard. Okay, and then also uh, I started having my uh, my underarm hair, uh, pubic hair, and also hair on my legs and on my thigh as well as on my arms okay and i also had um, some pimples when i was still growing i mean when i was still in the puberty age thank god they are not popping out uh, maybe one by one okay, but i have back acne until now um, uh, they went uh, the pimples went on my back not on my face um, we also have a, a bit grow taller um, Yeah, this is uh, this is kind of, you know, um, um, how do you call this one? It's kind of um, normal or you know, uh, observable. Okay, that we will grow old and voice changes. Um, I think I usually have like a bit of a high pitch when I was still in grade school, and then uh, it changes a little bit as as time grows. Okay, and we also have your wet dreams. All the boys undergone this one. Okay, it's like we are having orgasm or we are having climax. You know, it's like sensation or pleasure that we we feel when we are, you know, when we are sleeping. Okay, it's like we are having kind of, you know, wild dreams, something like that. Okay, and these things that I am talking are are all normal, and you shouldn't be shy about this one. Okay, maybe it, it can be shy on your parts because you are growing, but you know, uh, once you you already you already here in this course in this um, in this um, how do you call this one in this profession of becoming a nurse, so you should be you should be open about these things about these changes. Okay, now uh, there are some male um, individuals also who are. Um, Experiencing this one, this is your ED or your erectile, uh, your erectile uh, dysfunction. This is the failure to achieve um, erections. Okay, uh, this is also called as your impotence. We also have here some changes. This is the uh, uh, your male pattern baldness, your male pattern baldness. This is genetic disorder, and I think I'm already in. Stage three, if I'm not mistaken, but my hair is, is actually like very thin. It's not having having a pattern of baldness, just like this is stage four, stage five. Okay, it's just I have a thin hair. Now let's move on here. So uh, that's all. That's are the things that you need to learn about the male reproductive system. If you have If you have more questions or maybe as you observe your own reproductive system and maybe there are some problems or are not normal about that maybe you can talk to your to your doctor about those things okay and let's now move on to the functions of the female reproductive system they produce the female oocytes or the sex cells we also have produced female sex hormones receive sperm from males develop and nourish embryos okay simple as that now let's go on here again do not be shocked about the images that you are looking or plastering in your cell phones or in your laptops these are all normal things that you're going to see okay you can see more actual of this once you go to your um, hospital duties so we're going to talk about your external female genitalia so we have the vulva The vulva is the external female organs. Okay, as you can see here on the upper part here, this one is the mons pubis. 
Uh, this is the fatty layer of skin covering your pubic symphysis. This is very evident once you already grown up and you have like a lot of kids. You can see the mons pubis. It is very evident. Okay, we also have here going down your labia majora. This one, labia majora. This is larger and it is on the outer fold of the skin. Okay, your labia majora, they are like equivalent to the male scrotum. Okay, now here, as you can see here, this is the labia minora. The minora, these are thinner and they are um, in the inner folds of the skin. Okay. Now we have your prepuce here. I forget. We have here the prepuce. Uh, we also have prepuce in the males. Okay. In the female, we also have this one. Uh, these are where the two labia minora unite over your clitoris here. Your clitoris, these are the small erectile structure located in the vestibule. Okay, uh, this is equivalent to male penis and this is also very sensitive. Okay, so do not touch. Now, let's go here. We have your prefuse. You already discussed that one. Your vestibule here, this one. Um, this part here, this is the space in which the vagina and the urethra are located. This one, okay. So we have the urethra vagina. Now, in order for you not to be, uh, not to be confused with the, uh, you know, with the openings, or with the with the orifice, uh, remember the UVA. Okay, UVA. The uppermost part here. This is the u urethra vagina anus. Okay, so here, uh, vagina. Of course, this is where the you know the babies being uh, being expelled, um, having the expulsion from the mother. Okay, and, and also you already know what is anus, right? Now let's move on here. We have your female reproductive organs here. Uh, you can see this one on your books. Okay. Now, uh, if we're going to move forward here, as you can see, this is the ovary here. We have a more elaborative um, diagram here. This one, the ovaries, they're the primary female reproductive organ. They produce the oocytes and the sex hormones. They're the one on either side of um, the uterus, okay? And we also have here, uh, as you can see, we have what we call your ovarian ligament. This one here. So ovarian ligament, they anchor the ovaries to your uterus. Okay. Now here, this one on the far end, this is your suspend, uh, suspensory ligament. They anchor the ovaries to the pelvic cavity. Okay. And we also have your ovarian follicle. Okay. Your ovarian follicle, uh, these are the cells in the ovaries that contain your oocytes. Okay. Now, as you can see here, we have your fimbra or fimbrae. This should be fimbrae. These are the finger-like structure around the opening of the uterine tubes that helps sweep oocytes into the, your uterine uh, tubes. And your uh, this one, your uterine tube or your fallopian tube, these are parts of the uterus which extends towards the ovaries and receives your oocytes. Okay. Now moving on here. So I know you're maybe you're already familiar with this one. Maybe your mom or your sister or your grandma had your tubal ligation. Okay, the tubal ligation, it is the sterilization of female so that they will not be able to produce, um, you know, egg cells and there will not be, um, there, there will be no fertilized egg and offspring to be done, okay, or to be made. Now, here we also have your ectopic uh, pregnancy. Your ectopic pregnancy, if fertilized oocytes or the zygote implants somewhere beside the uterus 
Okay, usually they're being implanted in your uterine tube. Okay, so you can see here the normal pregnancy should be here, but in your ectopic, the fetus is or the zygote is being, you know, being held on this part. Okay, now let's move on here. So let's talk about the layers, uh, the layers of your uterus. But before that, here, this is the uterus. So we have the fundus, the body, and the cervix. So this one is the pear shape, uh, pear size structure located in the pelvic cavity. Uh, what is the function of your uterus? They receive, they retain, and provide nourishment uh, for fertilized oocyte where embryo resides and develops. Now, the body is the main part, while the cervix is the narrow region that leads to the vagina okay and your uh your uterus layers here on the right side we have your endometrium this is the innermost uh, layer that is laughed off during the menstruation okay what's the one that is being slapped off during the menstruation it is your endometrium okay next one is we have your myo means muscle your myometrium or the muscular layer this is the middle layer composed of smooth muscle and the the last one is your perimetrium okay or the serous layer this is your uh, outermost layer of the uterus okay i hope this one is clear now let's move on here we have your vagina the vagina extends from the uterus to the outside of the body. This is the female uh, copulation organ that receives the penis during the intercourse. Okay, it's not on the urethra. It should not be in anus, but it should be in the vagina. Okay, and also this is uh, the area which allows the uh, menstrual flow or the menstruation. Okay, it also involves in the childbirth. They contain very muscular walls and a mucous membrane. Also, vagina is very acidic, okay? So that it can keep out bacteria, okay? Next one. Oh, what is that? Oh, there we go. The follicle, uh, follicle and oocyte um, development. So the fetus, the oocyte is your organum, primary oocyte. Follicle is your free uh, primordial follicle. Puberty to menopause, primary oocytes. While your menopause, we have your secondary oocytes. Okay, just read this one on your book. And also this illustration, this one is available in the book. This is the maturation of the oocytes and the uh, in the follicles. Okay, let's move to the next slide. We have your ovulation. So what is ovulation all about? This is when a mature follicle ruptures, forcing the oocyte into your peritoneal or pelvic cavity. This is due to the LH or your luteinizing hormone that is being secreted again where? In your anterior pituitary gland, okay? So we have your corpus luteum here. These are the mature follicle after ovulation and they de degenerate if the egg is not fertilized, okay? So as you can see here, another illustration. This one is, uh, please read this one in your book. Now, what are the other female reproductive facts that we need to know? Now, the female are born with all of their ogonia or two million, unlike males that only begin to produce sperm during the puberty, okay? And at puberty, about uh, 300 to 400,000 uugunya are left. And puberty to menopause, FSH stimulates several follicles to begin developing during each menstrual cycle, but only one follicle should be ovulated. Okay, please remember that one. Next one. The oocytes are swept into one uterine tubes by the fimbrate. Remember the finger-like structure that we talked a while ago? If a sperm is present in uterine tube during ovulation, oocyte could be 
、um, fertilize. Okay. Now, if fertilization occurs, then zygote implants in the uterus. The oocyte only lives for 24 hours, so if no sperm is present at ovulation, no zygote will develop, and oocyte will eventually die. Okay. A while ago, we talked about some changes or the things that are happening during the、uh, during the male puberty. This time, going to have the female puberty. So it begins between 11 to 13, and usually completed by 16 years old. Okay, and the word menarch. This is the first episode of your menstrual bleeding. We call it as your menarch. Vagina, uterus, uterine tubes, and external genitalia to enlarge and fat is deposited into your breast. And also on your hip area, elevated level of estrogen and progesterone are secreted by your ovaries. Okay, now here, maybe some of you already have or already developed their mammary gland. Maybe some of you are not yet. Okay, now organs of milk production in breast. That is your mammary gland. Modified sweat glands. Female breasts begin to enlarge during puberty and consist of lobes covered by adipose tissues. Lobes, ducts, lobules are altered during lactation to expel milk. Okay. Now, looking at this one, this is an illustration of or the anatomy of the breast. As you can see, most of it is being composed by adipose tissue. Okay. Now here, female sex hormones that I want you also to、um, to memorize: your gonadotropin,、uh, gonadotropin、uh, releasing hormone. It is from your hypothalamus, stimulates the secretion of your LH and your FSH, and also your LH is in your anterior pituitary gland that can cause the ovulation. Your FSH, the follicle stimulating hormone. In your anterior pituitary gland as well, signals the follicles in、uh, in ovaries to being、uh, development. Estrogen follicles of、um, the ovaries affects your endometrial lining of uterus. Breast regulates the secretion of LH and FSH. Progesterone,、uh, the ovaries, affects endometrial lining of uterus secretions. Breast affects LH and FSH and secondary sexual characteristics. Okay, now let's move on here. Your menstrual cycle or your mens.、Uh, this is the series of changes that occur in sex、uh, in sexually mature non-pregnant female. Okay, maybe some of you here started very young, very early. Some of you maybe are late bloomers, but this one is being done in in less than a month. Okay, your menses. These are the time when endometrium is shed from the uterus. We mentioned this one a while ago. Average is twenty eight days and result from cyclical changes that occur in your endometrium. Okay, next one is. Stages of your menstrual cycle. Okay, so we have day one to five. In day one to five, this is the shedding of the endometrium. There's going to be menstrual bleeding, and the estrogen and progesterone levels are low. Follicle begins to mature. On your day six、uh, to thirteen, this is your、um, proliferative. This is between the end of the menses and the ovulation. This is where the endometrium starts to rebuild. The estrogen level begin to increase. The progesterone level remain low, and the follicle matures during this time. While your day fourteen, this is the ovulation. The oocyte is released due to your luteinizing hormone. The estrogen level is high. Progesterone level are increasing. Cervical mucus. Teens or teens, okay. Day fifteen to twenty-eight. This is your secretory between ovulation and your next menstruation. 
the endometrium is preparing for implantation, estrogen level decreases, the progesterone level high, and uh, cervical mucus thickens. Okay. Uh, we have this one. This is the uh, menstrual cycle that is available on your book. Please read this part. Now, how about this one? This is your amenorrhea. Amenorrhea, there is no menstruation. And this is normal before the puberty. If the female, young kids, young female kids are not yet mature or not yet on the puberty stage, they have amenorrhea. This is also normal during pregnancy and lactation. There are no menstruation. And this is also after the menopausal stage. Okay. Now, here we have the word menopause, the time when ovaries secrete less hormone and number of follicles in ovary is low. Menstrual cycle and ovulation are less regular. There's going to be like, um, you know, your Lola, your Tito, Tita, or your parents will feel hot flashes, fatigue, irritability may occur. Okay. Estrogen replacement therapy may be used to decrease the side effects okay next time i mean next one we have like uh, what are the things that you can do to avoid pregnancy uh, that you should know you should learn and you should do because you guys are still very young please no more joa uh you can do joa but please no no sexual activity yet okay uh become a registered nurse first okay the first thing that you need to know or you need to learn or you need to practice is the word abstinence okay abstinence is refraining from sexual intercourse okay the next one here uh please don't do this one okay this is your coitus interruptus also known as the withdrawal Okay, this is the removal of penis into the vagina before ejaculation. This is not usually 100% safe. Okay, because there are sometimes, you know, there's like pre-ejaculation that is happening, especially if the urge is, you know, is very high and you cannot control yourself. Okay, this is your coitus interruptus. Next one is here. You have the male condom. Um... If you cannot control yourself, at least use some of this. This is 98% effective. Um, just be responsible on how are you going to use this one uh, so that it will not be broken. Okay. So, and this one is very cheap to buy. So, just buy some of this one. Okay. If you're going to use it, but I'm not recommending for you to use these things. Okay or not even to cross your mind this is the vaginal condom vaginal condom is 95 percent effective actually okay we also have this one as you can see this is the letter t thing here as you can see that is what we call the iud the intrauterine device this is 99.99 percent effective actually okay um uh, birth controls or the oral contraceptives Okay, this is 99.9% um, effective if you are uh, if you are doing it uh, properly. Okay, now there are many more things that you can do so uh, so that you cannot have you know pregnancy like maybe um, tubal ligation, vasectomy for males, something like that, or the morning after pill, or there are other drugs that you can. You can take something like that but please be very responsible on doing these things okay you should be mature enough and you should know the uh the you know the consequences if you're going to do this one and it's too early for you to to do these things actually okay and this will end our topic for today um it's all about the chapter 19 the reproductive system for both the female and the male and I'll see you again next time. Please stay awesome. Goodbye.